The most rewarding part is the connections. You know, I came to this space and I didn't know anybody. And the women that I have met in this space who are in leadership positions it is incredible. And those connections and friendships um, that I've made through the these past five years are so rewarding. And I'm so inspired by the women who are dedicating their careers and all of their time to, you know, raising awareness, fighting the stigma, you know, advocating for policy changes um, and, you know, really leading the charge in brain health prevention awareness is amazing. You know, when all this started and my mom was diagnosed, I felt alone and so sure that I was the only person who could understand what I was going through. And now I know how wrong that was and, and, um, and that there are so many people who unfortunately have experienced this, but therefore understand what I'm going through, but also want to tear Alzheimer's down as much as I do. And I think that that about face from that like negative darkness to, oh, there's an amazing community here that I am so not alone. And I am joined with so many amazing people who want to do the same thing I want to do. For me, it was incredibly important to have a woman at the helm of Hilarity for Charity. Women have a very special ability to lead um, while also giving deep care and deep respect to people um, and the people they are working with. And when we found Bonnie, all of us, the men included, uh, <laughs> felt listened to and inspired by. And I think that women are able to lead in a way where they are setting an example, but also bringing everyone with them. Yeah, I mean, particularly in the Alzheimer's space, this disease disproportionately affects women. Um, Two thirds of people who have Alzheimer's are women. So it's so important to have representation. You know, more than half of the population on this planet are women and we should have equal representation in leadership roles. And that means equal, not just, oh, well, we have a few women, uh, so that's okay. It's not okay. It really needs to be half. Um, and I think women in leadership roles can be such great mo role models for younger women coming up through the space um, or through their careers and really model that young women have a seat at the table and can get equal pay and that their approaches to problem solving um, or to the work is just equal, as equally valid. You know, what I've seen in, in our organization particularly is we come to the table with different experiences, different skill sets, uh, different problem solving approaches, and all of that creates uh, what organizations need, growth and scale and the ability to serve, you know, those people who we serve. I think both perspectives are really important um, and to have an equal share of those voices is really important. My mom was such a role model to me in that she had a career that she was passionate about and that she knew that teaching was something that made her feel good mm -hmm. and that putting herself out there and helping young children fed who her soul was and seeing her have passion for her career and a commitment to what she wanted to do was so inspiring to me or to, to me and 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 clearly has taught me to work hard for the stuff that I really care about. I would say one of my sort of funny ones is just gives you a little insight into my childhood, but is Billie Jean King oh. she was like the most amazing tennis player, um, but also really fought for, you know, women's rights in sports and LGBTQ rights. And I still to this day, remember the match with her and Bobby Riggs. And it was such like a bone of contention and within families and people talking about it. And how could a woman beat a man? And, 
you know? And so I've just been, a, you know, fanning on her forever. And whenever I go to the U.S. Open and often I see her in the audience um, or in the, in the stands, it's always such a thrill for me. So she was sort of like, you know, somebody I really looked up to when I was young. I love that. Same. I mean, same. I'm sure. I mean, talk about a woman who took no shit from anyone. No shit. No, and uh, and change the course of you know the pay gap for women. Yeah, I think if I had a piece of advice to offer to the next generation of women, it would be to not feel limited. Say to yourself, "What is it that I want? What is it that I need as a person?" And then put yourself out there, put your story out there, tell someone else, this is what I want for myself. This is what I want for this thing. I want to find a cure for Alzheimer's. I want to support families who are going through this terrible situation. If you don't put out there what you want, it's never going to happen. And you have to know what you want. And as women, I think that society historically has unfortunately created a story that women can fit into certain categories and certain categories only. And that is so not true. We don't need to be limited by our choices. You don't have to do what society tells you to do, what the patriarchy tells you to do. You can do what you want and you just have to keep going you have to listen to that inner voice that says, I can. You have to ignore the inner voice that says, I can't, because we all have that too. Um, and believe in yourself and what you want. I agree with you. Women have been taught to think that we have to, you know, only take on certain roles. And it's just mm -hmm. unheard of if we're in, you know, these leadership roles. So this notion of imposter syndrome is so debilitating. And <laughs> I read somewhere that 75% of women in leadership positions have imposter syndrome and that they don't feel that men, their male counterparts have the same incidence of it. And, um, you know, I think that we all feel that we don't belong here or that, you know, we're faking it, but the reality is, is you just can't let that stop you. And I think that like, if you can recognize it and name it and then reframe it, we definitely can push past the imposter syndrome and that should not stand in the way of, you know, women pursuing their dreams or being leaders. You know, we have a female dominated staff at the moment. We have had male staff members. Um, but what I find with women in particular is just what you said is like, we all listen to each other. We all collaborate. We problem solve together. Um, and I think that's really unique amongst women in business. Um, we're not trying to force a solution, mm -hmm. right? We're trying to bring everybody along and make Eat good decisions other. together, right? Mm -hmm. HFC, you know, we are thinking really intentionally about mm -hmm. diversifying, one, the people that we serve in our programs, two, who we have on our team and who we have in our leadership. And it's not something that we can just hope happens, right? We have to be very intentional and it has to be, um, you know, filtered through every aspect of the organization. And I definitely think the organization will benefit from it in terms of, um, you know, how we grow and how we reach more people. And I think that is such a a beautiful way to lead and a, and, and a a bit of a female centric way to lead, which is again, to lead, but include and lift up. And I think that, you know, as people who are running an organization that wants to reach everyone, right. that's what we need to be doing is listening to all sorts of voices. And that is again, why it is so important for everyone to share their story and to put their version of life out there so that we can learn. And I think that as women, we are listening. And the more listening we can do, then the more we grow.